What's up, everybody? Coach Frontier here. Uh, I'm with Ryan Whiting, and we are looking at a particular practice from a little bit ago in his career. And we're just going to walk through kind of this practice and then specifically a couple throws. Yep. So, yeah, for me, this practice was, I believe, right after Moscow 2013, um, when Storl beat me, so I had a little fire going. Um, but all these are pretty, for me, the first few are just rhythmic throws, kind of trying to rhythm check. And I wasn't thinking a whole lot by the time we were at this point in my career. I was just kind of thinking big picture things, making sure it's feeling good. And I would take pretty, pretty easy throws. I mean, the first non-reverse you saw was probably 2070 to 21, and then kind of build from there into reverses. And I would only go to reverse when I was comfortable with what I was doing in the non. So that's tip. That was a typical practice. Then it would kind of be warm up to maybe 15 throws total. Harper is making a special appearance on this little video today. Yeah. Um, when you, when you were kind of in this mindset, could, did, did you feel like, um, like, Hey, tomorrow's going to feel like this too. Uh, and the next day is going to feel like this too. Or were you in, you know, a place where, Hey, this day went really well. And maybe there are some other days that didn't go quite as well, but for whatever reason, all cylinders were hitting on a particular day. Um, it, typically, I mean, I knew I, I programmed the same kind of weight schedule for about six years in a row. So I would get out of my body pretty consistently. And that was just my way of like, making sure I wasn't killing myself in the weight room or anything. So I know Monday, I just journal a lot. So I knew Monday I'd feel really good. Tuesday I'd have some, some fatigue from Monday's lift. Wednesdays were typically my really bad days. I'd throw into a net or just throw four for reps and just try to kind of feel contact with the ground or pick one feeling in the throw to, to work on. Thursdays I'd start coming out of it and, and Fridays I'd be, I'd be feeling okay. This was a, I believe this is a Monday. Um, so yeah, I was just kind of, I use my Mondays as my kind of distance training and try to find my range. And um, this was a, this was a pretty good one ranging from the non reverses at, I don't know, 68 to 60, probably 68 to 70. And then reverses were all the way up to about 75. And it was yeah. a good day. It was, yeah, it was a really good day. Good day. Yeah, good uh, day. Talk to us a little bit about what you were thinking on your non-reverse throws. What, what is it, what's, what's in your head about what you're trying to get out of that um, and what you need to feel so that, hey, okay, here's my non-reverses. How many would you take? And now I'm ready to go to fulls. Um, typically, I would take, on, on my down days, I would take a lot more non. So sometimes Wednesday, Wednesday would, we would just stick to non's because I knew that if my body came back to me, I would be able to reverse whatever I was doing in a non. Um, but a day like this, warming up with nons, I'd probably take three to five and just kind of try to feel my right, my right side kind of pulling the shot out around my left leg in the back and then just trying to find direction out of the back. So I'm gonna slow one of these down and you can just walk through a non-reverse for us here. Yeah. So, here as i'm winding i'm thinking right here i'm thinking of loading my left foot so i'm trying to get energy into my left foot so it pushes me into the ring and i'm kind of actually thinking of loading back towards the back of the ring so reaching back towards the camera so my left foot load is more like a rhythmic jump rather than just a turn and a push so right here i'm thinking of loading into my toe and i'm actually pushing towards the back of the ring right here so my knees turned in and i'm getting ready to push i'm already getting ready to push into the ring but my right leg is coming back towards the camera. So I'm thinking of reaching my right leg back towards the camera. So here, as I turn the corner, I'm thinking of pushing like actively that the um, concentric part of that jump is happening. So I'm getting driven into the ring by my left leg while my right leg is flung out to the right from pushing on the ground with my right leg. Um, and this this all became pretty rhythmic. And I my only thought here was kind of reaching my left out around my right. And then that was an upper body cue because my lower body was pretty automatic as long as I was healthy. You talked briefly about this, about how late you got this right leg extended. Um, you know, it's still bent relative yeah. to maybe, uh, hey, I want to get my right leg out, toe up. Um, and you get it there, but it, it, it gets there like, you know, right now on the side more so. And we'll see a lot of throwers have that already out 
kind of in, in this position back here. I yeah. Nice to cooperate. Yeah. Sorry about and, that. Yeah, my right leg my right leg was just something. So it came off the sweep. So you can see me loading all the way to my right. And then it took me a long time to get back to my left. So that's that's why you see that that right a little bit late. And I emphasize the left leg load rather than the right leg sweep because my sweep was traditionally just pretty big. So I, I never really had to worry about that. And so so timing there, as I'm getting to the middle, I'm thinking, so out of the back, I'm pushing on my left, thinking of loading my left. Right here, I'm thinking of creating just rotational separation. So I'm bringing my right across my body aggressively. So I'm actively pulling my right across my body here. And I'm trying to hold my upper body to the sector just to create some, some of that separation across the core. Chest is square, trying to keep that left shoulder pointed out at the sector for as long as possible while the right gets yep. in front of you. And upper body level with the ground. I didn't do great here, but I mean, the everyone's going to be a little different in that part of the throw. But the, the goal, big picture, is just kind of level with the ground with the upper body. And you can see my left side coming, coming in right there, level. And then as I drive off, everyone's right side is going to kind of pop up in the air. And getting here, I'm just thinking of maintaining position. I'm trying to hold that separation, lower body relative to upper body, and let my left come to the ground. As soon as I feel that left into the ground, my right leg is free to free to go. We've talked right. about this uh, quite a bit. You know, you're blocked off just a little bit with the left leg, yeah. and I've heard you say you'd much rather be left blocked off a little bit than than too wide out in the bucket, if, or you know, much wider to the left on the toe board. I don't know if everyone says in the bucket, but yeah and, and that that was just i mean that was personal preference to start and it, it just felt more comfortable to me like i liked having my left leg in front of me because i had a really strong right leg like my right leg would just automatically turn and start pushing into the ground and if i didn't have my left leg in front of me i'd be i'd be flying out of the front of the ring so for me um i never really thought about my left arm block i thought about it just like leading my delivery path so you'll see my left arm kind of like wide and all all wild there but i don't i don't think about that a whole lot so you're just sending it out, kind of setting you up for like, this is the trajectory yeah, of the so throw, I'm, this is the orbit of the throw, kind of. Yeah, and I'm pointing, so right here, uh, go back like two or three frames, right there. I know where the ball is going. Right there, my right side, my left side is open to the sector, and I'm just driving my right into my left right here, lifting it up over my, up over my left leg. And tell us a little bit about, again, this is non-reverse, what you're trying to get out of the right foot before that shot leaves your hand? Um, trying to maintain contact. So con trying to maintain contact with the with the ground um, with my right foot until the shot leaves my hand. And you can see I almost did it there. Yeah. yeah. My left shoulder's pulling me to the left a little bit. So that's what made my right kick off the ground a little early. Um, if I was I think... a little more patient and thought about this a little more, I probably would have done a little better job. But these are the days that I was just throwing for rhythm. Yeah, you're not thinking about technical stuff at this point in the no, season. Not, you're not, just, yeah. not a ton. Um, I think we talked briefly, you know, so many high school kids who either struggle not throwing non-reverses and they really need to work that into their repertoire, um, but too often would jump, you know, kind of jump off the ground right now. Um, you know, jump off the ground right now, start jumping, uh, and or be well off the ground already. And this idea of trying to keep that, you know, right foot still on the ground, working the earth until that ball's still in your hand. And this one just came off a little bit early, but yeah. like you said, this is more about rhythm at this point. Yeah. And and for me, like we, I trained that. I didn't realize that's what I was training when I was training it, but like a lot of med ball throws, just trying to feel um, South Africans. I think a lot of people like don't realize how much pressure is into my left foot right there. Like in the front of the ring when, I'm driving as hard as I can out of the back. That drive all has to go somewhere and it's going into my left leg there. So everyone, like a lot of kids that I, I, I coach ask me like, why can't they just get rid of the toe board? It's stupid. But almost every one of my throws, you're going to see my foot like against the toe board or halfway up it. Partially on it, yeah. Most professional throwers are going to be there because that's what it's for. It's for yeah, using that part of your block or part of your bracing. Yep. And you just, that's just, you got to get comfortable becoming uncomfortable. And if you're like Chase last year for the first time would have, she was really uncomfortable against the toe board. It was like a, a red light when she, she hit the toe board. So getting her comfortable with that and getting her comfortable with using that, she's going to be, you got a lot more. And 
I was mm-hmm. just really comfortable with when, when my left foot hit the toe board, I just put tons of pressure into it and I let it push me back to my right. And, you know, the process for like taking Chase through that, because she was a glider before, um, what's that process like? And, and when does it start clicking? And is it just a number of matter of reps for someone to start understanding, like how to use that, utilize that toe board, how to get there consistently in the same spot? Probably it's the yeah, first step, but. At least just not getting, not being uncomfortable with it, I think is the biggest thing. Like it, you're, some people might never be okay with like, like completely okay. But I had really flexible ankles and knees and stuff. And I just never really worried about it that much for her. She's, she was a glider. So there's a lot more control. Like when you put your left foot into the toe board and a glide, you know, it's going where you drove it. Yeah. It's not coming in rotationally. So she's, she's pretty consistently like, two to four inches away from the toe board right now and getting her to drive more out of the back. She understands what it does. Like it puts her up into the throw more at the finish, but she's still really hesitant to get up there. And I think it's going to be still another year or two before she's, she's comfortable. And it's just a matter of me saying it over and over again. And that some keys are just like that, especially with someone as big and strong as her. I mean, like she can break herself. And and that's not our goal. We just kind of want to inch her towards it and then find where she's comfortable and we'll start working on other things. So I'll repeat again, how many non-reverses in a, in a practice like this typically? Uh, three to five and not really. I mean, they were just finding rhythm and making sure my right foot was on the ground. And then you'll see my first. Yeah, and so here you're, here you're the, the two um, fulls from the back of the circle. How many fulls in, in a practice session? Um, I full reverse, maybe 10 up to, up to 12, probably on my, on my more intense days, just cause your, your hand wears out, your elbow starts hurting, like your left, left ankle and knee driving into the toe board, start to take a little beating. Um, but there's, there's a lot of wear and tear going through like a, a 74 foot throw. And that's, I mean, you don't hear Tom or any of them complain about it, but we all have nagging injuries that like. Doing what we do just hurts a little con, bit. Con, you just the get constant, the like uh, the dull, the dull background noise. Of yeah, pain. and it's just like it's like lifting. Uh, the thing that I don't think a lot of women lifters understand is that like the guys are picking up almost twice as much weight, and your hands hurt all the time, and you don't realize that until you hit a certain threshold. Like picking up a five hundred pound bar just hurts. And that's that's. I mean, there's parts of throwing that are like that too. So let's walk through these last two throws. Um, and this first one, um, it looks very technical uh, and probably in the ballpark of like 70, 71. Mm-hmm. And I slowed it down here and this is full with reverse. Yeah, so go, I mean, I knew going from a non to a reverse, this was probably gonna be my most technical throw of the day just because I let whatever I did my non-reverse carry over into, into this. So not going to ground as long as possible. My head stays centered a lot better on this one than like through the finish. than um, some of the other ones you'll see that are a little higher intensity. And if I would have done both, like if I would have felt good enough to hold my head and drive my right side, you probably would have seen it go in the grass, but like in the moment you can't really, I was working on what I was working on. And I, I think that's, that's more valuable than like looking back and saying, Oh, I could have done that, but so I've that, never been a big regret person. Yeah. So that first transition to reverse where you're kind of holding on to some of the technical things you're thinking about in non-reverse. Yeah. It still went far and farther than your non-reverses and 71 is a really far throw, but then this one you're getting at that second one, you're getting after it. And so here's the first one again, where you hold that, you hold that center with your, with your head a little bit better. Yep. Yeah. And if you just, I mean, one of my big rules of thumb for like watching, watching kids and fade, fade video reviews is wait till we get to the end. Centering your head above your right foot as you get to your power position. Yeah. I'll wait till we get there. Yep. So right here. Yeah. I just, I would like to think of like a wall behind my head here. And trying like on this side, you're saying? Yep. Yeah, right there. Yep. 
So you can see right at the end, I start to, I mean, and that's just a release of tension. Like I, there's a lot of tension going on there and, and me moving my head to the left a little bit releases some of it and shortcuts me a little. If I would have maintained my block a little bit better and held my head in the center, like this will get a lot more distance, but it also is a lot more pressure. And that's not, I was just trying to go for rhythm on this one. That's why it was, this was probably my best technical throw, like you said. And I was able to get it a little further down the middle. Yeah. So did, was it pretty typical for you if if that head gets a little bit looser and more aggressive left, the ball stays off to the right? On this um, next, the last few, the ball seems to be yeah. further right. Yeah, because you'll... But I mean, farther, they're farther throws. They're more aggressive. There's more rhythm to them. Yeah, so I'm, I'm not... On that one before, I just kind of let it come out off my hips. Like, it looks like I hit it, but it, that, that hit is just my stretch reaction happening. So on this one, you'll see... Just play it full speed once and then we'll oh, go yeah. to the left. So right as my left hits the ground, you see me realize the tension's there and go after it. Like yeah. I have a line to push up and I know where it is and I just kind of went. So, so here's right. throw number one. This is controlling the head. Yeah. So here I'm just letting my right hip go through the center. But even here, I mean, your head's still on that center line. Yeah, it stayed, it stayed pretty well. And that's that's really what I was thinking about, just long finish. And then this one, you'll see a, a point where I change gears, right? Probably one more, one or two more. Right there, you'll see my hip, like I'm actively engaged. So I have a line. Once I felt my left arm go to the sector, that stretch across my ch chest gives me a go to really go with my upper body. That left side block though, man, right in right through here, everything's come to a screeching halt, even though you're yeah. jumping off the ground. And I, I mean, I, I could have held these better and like with what I know now, I could have done better, but like then they felt good. That was probably 73 and then I think- Yeah, the last one. almost out of the pit. Yeah. Yeah, and then the one ones from the side are also- Yeah, we'll go, let's watch those two from the side. Yeah. You'll see a lot of different stuff from there. Side view. Yeah, so I'm actually th I'm thinking of pushing towards the back of the ring. It just looks like my hips are sitting in. I probably could have done better there, but it just on days you feel good. So you, you're you thinking about up. like pushing here and pushing yep. out here. Yep. And that's just to compensate for all the energy I'm I'm putting in. I mean, it's. If I just leaned in and did the same thing, I would be slammed into the ground by my right leg. You talked about this, um, about how you hold this left arm, try to like present or, or kind of chest and square to the sector on entry, where we'll see a lot of technique. Lately, I feel like people are using this left arm more out of the back to kind of let it go and, mm -hmm. and create more, more speed or more rotational speed. And you're trying to stay square here. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, and I like my my lower body was pretty consistent, so I would throw with, and like I didn't I didn't know like when I saw Tom Walsh throw, I was kind of just like, oh, what the hell is that? And then him and I got together, and and we would or I would try his throw, he would try my throw. You just emulate each other. Yeah, we just emulate each other, and I, I figured out pretty quickly like he like big picture, it's the same thing, and like he <laughs> is once you see my left shoulder point towards the sector. His does the same thing. His arm is just separate. So yep. and I, I talk a lot about that where where the difference between this and this isn't very different. The difference between this and this is very different. Yeah. Uh, um, and your so arm could be yeah. sh shoulder uh, rotating in, in its socket. Yeah, it's more it's more your your left shoulder than your left arm. Your left arm is not really a big. I mean, it is. It should be level with the ground, and it shouldn't like drag you off the axis or anything. But it, where it is, as long as it's level, it really did, doesn't matter a whole lot. Talk about ground ground contact and how um, 
So that's all my left leg doing that for me. I'm driving right. I'm driving straight through my left leg and my left leg's extending and giving me that on my right foot. And then, yeah, we talked about like, I didn't save a whole lot of throws, but it was just because I had, I had left ankle problems and I, I found out pretty early that I could turn it on them. or off. Yeah, I could, I could just turn it on and off. The suggestion for high school kids would be, uh, Don't do that. yeah, take thousands of throws and learn how to turn it on or off or yeah. save, save more throws than Ryan is here at practice. Yeah, I would, I would, I would recommend saving more throws. And, and a lot of my kids like Chase just saves throws and so does Nick. And it, it's not like we try to do that, but I was the lucky one. Tom's lucky. Krauser can do it. Like, I mean, you get to a certain point and you just have a lot more control than anyone could ever imagine you having like even me in college compared to me in this video like I was still throwing 71 feet but like the difference was I'd get in a meet and I'd have to think about it where here I'm just kind of I'm just if you told me to save a throw it would go the same distance and I'd be in the ring that's the only difference yeah I think some high school kids get into the trap of blowing out of the front and those are their best throws and then needing to do something actually different in the ring to save the throw as opposed to, I'm just going to do the same thing except think about, you know, being more active with the left arm after a release or yep. no, it's really body around one more turn. It really is just that left leg. And if left leg and body angle out of the back, I feel are the two things that save throws. It's like that one would have been easy to save. Sure. And that would have been, that, that's probably like, that's a good example of a qualification throw, like what I would do in qualifying at a world championship. Uh, did you, oh, you, you talk to Tom all the time. I mean, you guys are buddies, but when he was um, on the podcast, I asked him about his first throw. I said, I could not believe you threw 2290 on your first throw. You know, I'm thinking I'm going to see, and he like absolutely went after it, like just got after it, you know, visually yeah. I'm, and I'm thinking, aren't you, aren't you thinking like, hey, I'm going to go 90% on this first throw and make sure I get six today? And he's like, not in this field. You know, there's no, there's no more safe throws that get you anything in, no, that's, in the yeah, current that, landscape. I, I lived in a different – I mean, even this era, I lived in a different era than that. I mean, yeah. I would have I loved to throw in that meet, like in this shape. I would have been, I feel like, pretty comfortably up with them. It just is – well, and when, when 2150 would get you into a final, yeah, and now 2150, it, it just is crazy. You know, it's, it's yeah. crazy. 2150 would get you a medal most times. Yeah. And there, yeah, like, I mean, my best first throw ever, I think, was like 2180 or something like that. And I think that would have gone up drastically with more competition. I just, I never, not that I didn't need it. It's just like, that's what it was. Anything else you see as you are, are, is this bringing back some memories looking at this <laughs> practice session back in the day? Yeah. I mean, it was, I mean, when you're throwing like this, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's just, um, I mean, I can still feel it. I like once my knees healed, this rhythm just doesn't go away. Like it's still something like as you're, as I'm watching it right now, I can feel like what it feels like to load my left like that, what it feels like my left in the front and then the shot feel in your hand. Nice long pull on a shot feels pretty good. And then, yeah, it's, that was fun. Penn State was a good place to train in the summer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, I mean, there's like now knowing what I know now, I, I think I would have been more aggressive about changing a few things, but in the moment. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Ryan, hey, thank you so much for walking us through this practice session and telling us a little bit about what the heck you were thinking about at those moments in the throw, but also gives us some perspective on a, on a whole bunch of things. So appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I found I got a cat with me now. Hey, we have a uh, cat. Hello. And uh, my daughter Harper. Hello. Yep. All right. I'm going to hit. I'm gonna hit Stop recording.